Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. You cannot be transformed until you hear sounds. What makes men are the sounds they hear and the light they see. These are the two infrastructures for transformation. Every man will become what he hears and what he sees. Demons know this. Angels know this. God occasioned it. Men are the only ones who don't know it. And so when a man begins to interact with God's presence, he will tell you that there is a sound. There is a witness of a sound in his spirit. That sound is what makes him who he is. And when that man begins to bring a witness to a generation, you will hear his sound. When you hear people and you interact with people, you can tell the sound they met in the spirit. And so the first governing system of the presence are sounds. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, nothing happened. He said they were together in the upper room. Nothing happened. He said they were in one accord. Nothing happened. Until suddenly, he said they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. And the moment they heard that sound, the atmosphere was breached. The heavens superimposed over the earth. And immediately, the presence of God came upon them as pillars of fire. And so when a man does not have access to the sounds of the presence, there's no way he can come into the presence. The invitation that brings a man to the presence of God are the sounds that stream from the presence of God. Why do you think we start our service with worship? Because we know what sounds do. We know that if that service is going to be done from heaven, we will need to travel. And the most potent infrastructure for traveling are the sounds that comes from the spirit realm. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18, he said, Jesus, the Son of Man, he said he will descend with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Why doesn't he come quietly? I thought he said he will come like a thief at night. There is no way a spirit can travel without sound. The way you travel with vehicles and with planes, when the spirit being wants to travel, the only instrument for traveling is sound. And so the reason sound is the first component of the presence of God is because for the presence of God to move to you, or for you to move into the presence of God, sound is what makes it happen. And this is why the presence of God will remain locked away from you, no matter your exegetical intelligence, no matter your theological depth and dexterity, no matter your commitment to service in the kingdom. If you don't begin to hear the sounds of heaven, you will never know the presence of God. Because the first thing sounds do is that sounds transport spirits. Sounds transport spiritual realities. And so when the presence of God wants to come to your space, the sound will bring it. And when your spirit is to be carried into the presence, only by a sound will that happen. And so Jesus descended with a shout. The Holy Ghost descended with a sound. John was carried to heaven by a sound. Because the first law of the presence is that only by invitation can you be ushered in. And that invitation comes through sounds. Through sound. That's why the wise psalmist said in Psalm 100, when he was trying to access the courts of God, he didn't go there with his credentials. He went there with what? With praise. When sounds begin to proceed, the vehicles begin to prepare for the mobility to happen. Many Christians are in their brain arguing verses of scripture and they are not pressing to hear the sounds of heaven. The sound may not be loud, but by all means you will hear it. Because it's not every sound that is loud. At least science has taught us that some sounds are, are inaudible. But it's a frequency. It is the God transport frequency. So it's not about the volume. It's about the frequency you are hitting. There is a transport frequency of the presence that brings it to you or carry you there. If you don't prepare your atmosphere and culture it enough, you will never know the presence of God. The presence of God is not a token from a Bible school. The presence of God is a reality caught when you are in the spirit. John said, I was in the spirit on the last day. It is in the spirit you hear the sound. So everything you must do to keep yourself in the, priest, the spirit, if the presence of God is what you are looking for, then you must always culture that atmosphere. There are those who culture the atmosphere with tongues. The tongues itself is not the spirit, it's not the presence. But it is the atmosphere that prepares your vessel to hear the sound. There are those who culture the atmosphere with worship. Because what they are doing is that they are fine-tuning their spirit to align with the frequency. They know that there are many frequencies in the earth realm. The Bible says if a trumpet makes an unusual sound, who shall prepare for battle? There are many spirits releasing sounds into the earth. You think some of the music you hear is for pleasure. That's why you load your phone with uh, the way where they do me. You don't know that that is a journey to darkness. Because there are intelligence. See, the world is regulated by intelligence. What the sound is trying to do is to condition your spirit to a frequency of a demon. Because that demon wants to invite you. And the demon knows that if he shows up with two horns, you will run away. And so what he will do is that 
he will find the vibration of your soul he will know the kind of sound that activates your soul and when he gets that vibration he pumps that sound into the market and then while you are in the bus you are hearing it while you are on the road in the market you are hearing it and if you don't know that this is an unsolicited transport system you will not lock your spirit and so some of us when we are walking in the bus we, we are in the spirit because we don't want the bus driver to open us to a portal that we are not ready for while we are walking in the market we are in the spirit because you are not only in the spirit in part bus you are in the spirit in order to pick the sounds because while you are yet walking there are frequencies there are frequencies and your spirit can pick them and so if you know what to do you culture your atmosphere so that you are not taken to a territory where you don't want to go spirit summon men through sound they summon men you can go to a place you don't want to go to when you hear a sound your spirit can't resist it because sounds are according to the vibrations of the soul and so when the spirit wants to invite you he doesn't need to tell you come he will look for the vibrational frequency of your soul and he will create a sound that matches it the moment your soul resonates with that sound you are where that spirit is that's why even in light it's not every sound you hear there are certain sounds that you align with never allow sounds into your territory because they are transport mediums the first thing sounds do is that they transport you ezekiel said i was among the captives by the river Kabar." In Ezekiel 1, verse 1, in the 30th year, on the fifth month, on the fourth day, I was among the captives by the river Kabar, and I saw visions of God. The state of captivity is a state of, of, of outright depression. It's a state of hopelessness. When a priest begins to define himself as a captive, you know that he's at the lowest ebb of his existence. But sights began to come to him. Realms began to open. And when he saw, he said, I fell like a dead man. In Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1. And he said, him that sat upon the throne, he spoke to me. Ah! And he said, the moment he spoke, he didn't say I stood up. He said, as he spoke, the spirit entered into me. And the spirit carried me. Because sounds quicken. Sounds energize. Sounds activate. Sounds threaten. And it doesn't matter your state. If you hear the right sound at the right energy level, even the dead can come back to life. Jesus was speaking. He said that even the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And he said, they that hear him, they shall live. Because every time sounds come, they quicken. Lazarus was tied up and put in the grave. And suddenly Jesus stood and said, Lazarus, come forth. Nobody lost him. The Bible said he stood at the door. The sound activated life in the dead man and carried the dead man to the door. He said, lose him, let him go. Believers are not taught mystical realities of the spiritual realm. All we know are Bible school, Bible study materials that they gave us in Sunday school. And so people are quoting stories that they can't even remember correctly instead of participating in the spirit realm and learning the civilizations of heaven. See, when we get to Zion, nobody will talk to you. We will travel at different frequencies. <laughs> So sounds, transport, sound, quicken. A man who has known the presence of God is a man who travels in the realm. And the way he travels is by the sounds that he hears. And so sometimes when you become used to God's presence, when the atmosphere begins to change, you begin to pick it. These are the things we call summons. Sometimes there will be a burden, a burden. Sometimes there will be hunger, hunger in your spirit. You are talking to your friends, you are watching a movie, but suddenly you lost appetite. If you are a wise man in the spirit, you know that visitors have come from heaven. It's time to off the TV. It's time to be alone. That friend may travel from Lagos for 13 hours to come see you. Apologize to him. Eternity is resonating. You are about to lose a window. And if he doesn't understand, you are sorry. That friendship can be over. But you cannot miss one invitation from Zion. <laughs> That's why the, a spiritual man is mad. He's a madman. You are wondering. You asked me to come. I traveled for 14 hours. I'm sorry, but there's a movement. There's a movement. I'm sorry. I don't mean to disrespect you, but I see a traffic. Something is happening in the spirit realm. And if I don't stand correctly when the sound comes, I may miss the movement. And when earth is summoned, I have to be there. Because sometimes it may take 10 years of fasting and prayer to come to that point where invitations are beginning to come. You can't take it for granted. You will pay the price to journey. And the way we journey is through sound. It's called the excellency of the presence. And so when sound, the technology of sound begins to work in your life, 
two things that will happen is that you will constantly be energized and you will constantly be traveling so that's the beauty and these are the first articles of transformation that a man has enough energy to defy darkness the reason you fall into sin is because there's no energy in your spirit you know that immorality is wrong but when the energy of immorality arises in your soul there's no energy to choke it and so while you are engaging in it sometimes you are weeping but you can't help yourself it's a language of energy you know that lying is wrong but it's an energy and you don't have enough energy in your spirit you know it is good to pray but there's no energy because it's possible for a woman at the time of childbirth not to have energy to bring forth so the reason many men fall is because there's no energy in their spirit the changer, the game changer for energy is sound. When sounds come, they quicken you. Even the dead can be quickened by the right sound. And when sound come, they transport you from the pit to the throne room. And so the first article of the presence which engenders transformation are the frequencies that come from the presence. Sound prepares you for battle. It energizes you for war. And it transports you to your place of advantage. Trust me, if you don't hear sound, You'll be defeated. I don't know how yours come, but I pick mine. You know, when you go to the school of witches, after they teach you from the scrolls, you will now start with practicals. Because it's practical knowledge that imparts. It's not theoretical knowledge. There are many theologians today who know nothing about the spirit realm. God, three phrases in the Bible, they'll tell you where they are, like concordances, but they don't know the spirit realm. This one I'm teaching you is life in the spirit. May your spirit open to hear sounds. <laughs> It will bring energy. Energy. See, you will walk through a world of darkness. Instead of falling, you will hate it. You will come to a place where people are immoral. Instead of falling, you will hate it. It's an energy. How do you think? He said, thou lovest righteousness and hated iniquity. He said, even thy God has anointed you with the oil of gladness. It's not everybody that is falling. That you are falling, don't make it a theology. And say, all of us are falling. It's not all of us that are falling. Yes, sir. That place you fell, many men stood there and brought witness to Jesus. The difference is the sound that is in their spirit. Sound. It energizes, it quickens, and it transports. There are many pastors today who are bewitched, enslaved by darkness, because they are connected only to the wrong sound. The second governing force of the presence is light. The presence of God is littered with light. See, when you enter the spirit realm, you'll be shocked. And that's why you need light. You need to be schooled again. You see this chair you are sitting on? If you see a chair in the spirit realm, it will be light energy. There's no material in there. Everything, if you see a cup in the spirit, it's light energy. Everything in that realm is coated with light. You are sitting on the chair in the spirit both you who is sitting and the chair is light. You see, God, the Bible says, light. In fact, let's read scripture so that somebody doesn't say what I'm saying is, is meat. 1 Timothy 6 16. Write it, go and meditate on it. God will talk to you from deeper dimensions. He said, Who only had immortality dwelling in light which no man can approach, whom no man had seen and no man can see. To whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. So God dwells in light. In fact, 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. Here another scripture. I'm trying to talk to you about the presence. He said, this then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness. God is light. In fact, the only context in which you are the son of God today is because you are light. The Bible says God is the father of spirits. But you see, there are some spirits that rebelled. God is no longer their father. And so if you study the book of Job, he said the sons of God came to God. And he said Satan also came. He had to create a distinction between the sons of God and Satan. Because now Satan is darkness. But in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 5, he said you are the children of light. What he's saying is that you are the children of God. And so, the second thing that defines God's presence and his dwelling is light. It's impossible for you to access God's presence without interacting with light. But you see, when you begin to interact with light, light becomes many things in your spirit. 
The first thing light becomes in your spirit is that light becomes a weapon. That weapon is what we call wisdom. So you begin to see reality from a realm that is not corruptive. And so everything you do here, we establish that realm where that light came from. In Job chapter 38 verse 4, it said, declare now if you have understanding. What gives you the right to change things? What gives you the right to speak? What gives you the right to change things is the measure of light that is in you. If you have no light, you have no authority in the realm of God. What gives men power and authority in the realm of God is the light with which they are walking. In John chapter 1 verse 4 to 5, it said the light shines in the darkness. And it said the darkness comprehended it not. Every time light comes to you, you become an authority. And so the way God strengthens his servants is that he allows his light to shine upon them. You know the moon has no light. The light of the moon is received from the sun. But the moon is the ruler of darkness. And so the reason the moon is the ruler of darkness is because it's drawing light from the sun. That's how we also live and exercise authority on the face of the earth. Because every time we interact with the light of God, we begin to exercise authority. And Job said in Job 29 verse 3, he said, by light, I walk through darkness. If there's anything in your life challenging your Christian experience, it's because there's no light in that area. And so the cure to that problem is to visit the presence again. Because the moment light comes, authority is bequeathed. The second thing light does is that it crushes the enemy. The devil will remain a tyrant in your life until light comes. The moment light come, without, comes, without talking, the devil will run. See what you are struggling with. There are some men that if they show up, they won't need to talk. That thing will vanish forever and ever because they came. Not because they are speaking, but because the light they carry is a witness in the realm of the spirit. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8, he said, and, he shall, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and he shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Light destroys darkness. If there is a darkness in your life, what the presence of God will do for you is that it will give you light to destroy that darkness. It can be sin, it can be poverty, it can be failure, it can be near success syndrome. It doesn't matter. L darkness has no authority in the dwelling of light. The authority of darkness ends in darkness. But the boundary of light's authority begins from darkness. The moment light shows up, darkness bows. It's a non-negotiable reality. It is eternally so. He said the light shines in the darkness. The darkness knows that it doesn't have the power to comprehend light. And so when you begin to do business in God's presence, the first thing God will do is that he will give you light. He will give you light. That light will give you authority. And that light will empower you to destroy darkness. I've seen many people in my short walk with God. I went somewhere to preach. And I saw a damsel. This young lady looked like an Indian. When I looked upon this lady, I thought maybe she came for that meeting to trust God to win a contract. Because everything about her showcased excellence and glory. But to my greatest dismay, the lady was seeking God to get married. I said, it's not possible. What do you mean? Unless every man in where you live is blind. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 38 years old. What? Have you been locked up in your room all your life? How come? She said, nobody has asked her out in the last seven years. <laughs> that was the day I discovered that there's a mystery about light and darkness. There's a mystery, great mystery. It was from that day that I came up with the understanding that it's not beauty that gets people married. It's favor. But you see, there are many people who don't have enough light. They spend all their money on hair, on eyelashes, and on fingernails. <laughs> but when you have light, you will know that there is an economy that Esther had. That even when nobody should see the king, she broke protocol. And when she entered, the king stood up. And said the search is over it will take light it will take light too many people don't have light somebody entered ministry he wanted to start ministry in abuja and he gathered 100 million and entered the city he said they've come to take over the city he said relax how much is b-board he paid for it how much is tent he paid for it after four months they became three in the tent 
That was when he knew that what you need to start a ministry is not money, it's light. I wish you understood the excellency of light. You wouldn't jump into that business until you have light. And so what light comes to do is that it gives you authority for rulership and then it gives you power to crush the enemy. There are most of you here, they challenge that your family is going through, they challenge your ministry is going through, they challenge you are going through. It's darkness at work. If you had one flicker of light shine through that darkness, that challenge would have crumbled. And so the excellency of the presence, the glory of the presence, is the fact that the presence furnishes you with light. Light that is consistent with your destiny. He looked at Isaiah, Jeremiah. He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you and I sanctified you to be a prophet. You are not a priest. Your great-grandfather, your grandfather and your father may be priests. You are a prophet. And your order of the prophetic is to uproot and to plant. And so when Jeremiah enters a city, he knows that he's an architect of civilization. If he sees something that is not consistent with the will of God, he can say, by this time next year, vanish from the face of the earth. Because he found his destiny. That kind of precision and accuracy, you can't pick it in the market. You can't pick it in the Bible school. You will only pick it in the presence. The greatest crisis of destiny is dislocation. Men that should go to Nineveh are on a boat going to another direction. And because they are not in the direction of their destiny, all their efforts count for nothing. Hear this. Your effort will be wasted until light comes to you. I've taught many times, if you are in the wrong direction, speed is not an advantage. Imagine if I'm supposed to go to Benue and I face Gombe. I'm driving on high speed. I have an accident. I stop, change the tire. Engine knock, I repair it. Put in all the labor. After two days, I will now arrive Gombe. I'm farther from my destination. But if I had light and somebody tells me, take left, not right, all of that waste wouldn't have been necessary. The excellency of the presence is that the light of God is furnished. And that light gives you authority to prosecute destiny. And that light gives you authority to destroy the enemies of your destiny. You are not a victim. You are just in darkness. And the moment light comes to you, you will discover how helpless the devil is. The devil is not as strong as he parades himself to be. He's a defeated foe. He's a having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public show of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The devil is not powerful. The devil only has instrument of deception that he uses to keep the sons of light in captivity. The moment light comes to you, you will discover your rulership over the devil. That's the excellency of the presence of God. That light dwells in God's presence. Do you know why I'm teaching this? So that you will not reduce the presence of God to a feeling. You can be in a bus, and while you are in that bus, the presence of God will be so tangible. But you will feel nothing. It will be flooded with light. You can, be, you can wake up in the morning, you are talking to your wife in the kitchen, and the presence of God surrounds you. You are not feeling anything. The presence came as light. Everything you need to do for the next five years, the presence of God is downloading it. If you understand the presence, from that kitchen, you go to the altar. You know that where you are standing is holy ground. If you don't know the presence of God, you will think the presence of God is only strong when they are worshipping God in church and people are falling under the anointing. That's one of it, but it's deeper. Because the presence of God comes in the similitude of light. You can be in the bus and be in the presence of God. You can be in the market and be in the presence of God. You can be somewhere talking with your friends and the presence of God will come there. And when I knew this, I began to consciously maximize it. Because I thought before now that the presence of God was about the atmosphere in church and the feeling. And so when they are worshipping God, I'm sensitive, waiting, waiting. And when the presence of God falls down, I lift my hand and worship it. Until God began to teach me these things. Because the first dimension of the presence of God I knew was light. And I will be in a bus traveling. The presence of God will be so strong. And God will be downloading things. I will think I'm intelligent. I say, okay, when I get back, if I arrive at my destination, I will write these things down. I will now go back to my destination. I will think until my brain will crack. I will remember one thing that was said. I now discovered it was not my brain working. It was a vista that opened to me. That was when God began to teach me that light comes from my presence. And if you don't trap it, when I leave, that reality will leave. And I knew that the presence of God was not a feeling. It was light. And when the light of God comes, even if I'm driving, I pack. Because I know those articles are codes of destiny. And I've made many journeys that look impossible just by those few light strands that came to my spirit. Sometimes you are sleeping, he invades you in the dream. You are not even praying. God is talking to you until you wake up. He keeps talking. If you are wise, you will carry your book and start writing. If you think you are being intelligent, you will lose many seasons of your life. The presence is light. Some of you will not experience the presence of God when you are praying. 
It's when you finish praying and you are entering the bathroom, that's when the presence will come. And while you are shower, taking your shower, the presence of God will fall on you there. And God will begin to give you direction for destiny. But because you don't know the presence of God, you will think it's a feeling. And you will lose the presence of God. Elohim Adonai. Elohim Adonai. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.